Grown. Welcome to Edified, episode number 19. We're glad that you're here today. We're glad to be able to come together and talk about something that Justin, I think, is very important. I want to say hey to all those who are watching in Facebook Live, all those who will be listening throughout our recorded podcast. We are very appreciative of all of those who have given us very positive, edifying, mm -hmm. Uh, encouraging words. We appreciate that very much. As you can see, it's a two-man show today. George is out of the country. He is over in Ukraine, and uh, it was kind of hard to just, you know, Skype him in. Yeah. Uh, we don't really know how to do that anyhow, but uh, we're thankful for you. We're thankful to be together, and uh, it's going to be a very, I believe, important subject. Mm -hmm. Justin and I have been thinking on it now for a couple days and praying about it, and uh, Justin, why don't you tell us about what's going to be about? Yeah, we're going to, we're going to talk about right is always right. You know, we, as Christians, always want to do the right thing, always want to do uh, what is good, but there's times in our lives that we are faced with maybe a decision. Decisions really run our lives. Yeah. You know, as, as adults, we make 35,000 of them a day. That's conscious decisions, you know, ones we actually think about per day, which is just really incredible to think about uh, how many we actually make but decisions really really run the course of our lives we are we are faced with them all the time and um, doing what is right all the time can be difficult uh, especially when you're younger and you're, you're you've got a lot of peer pressure uh, involved so we want to talk today about right is always right character is defined as doing the right thing even when nobody is looking all right it may not necessarily be webster defined that way but that's kind of our uh perception of, of how it's defined in today's culture yeah uh dr martin luther king jr again very famous for a lot of things especially his his civil rights leadership but he made the the quote the time is always right to do what is right and you know when that ties over into our lives it, it helps us in a secular world mm -hmm. for certain but it really what we want to talk about and focus on today is how much it helps us in a spiritual world in our spiritual walks and again when, when we talk to you about things on the edified podcast it's certainly sometimes some things that are challenging right but we also know that when we do these things edification will come mm -hmm. And these are things that, that we want to challenge ourselves on, um, you know, because it is it's very important to always do what's right. You know, I know of someone, uh, and this is fresh on my mind because uh, I had to go visit my wife at her work today, and um, we are always uh, sponsored by, you might wonder what I drink in my drink here, uh, I like Pepsi Max. Um, it's the only diet drink I care to to drink personally and so I, I drink it and uh, the the drink machines at the University of South Alabama had Pepsi Max or Pepsi Zero whatever it's called now and uh, so I had a couple dollars in it's Pepsi Black Label yeah I had a couple dollars in change so I put it in as dollar fifty you know and so I put it in well it took my money and so I like well they take a debit card so I swipe my debit card and I think I'm gonna get two of these a day well it didn't spit my drink out again. And so I'm sitting there thinking, somebody's going to come along, buy a Pepsi Zero, and they're going to get three of them. You know, that's going to be their lucky day. But do you know, and I, I said someone, I'm just going to tell you it's my wife. She is so ethically right that if a drink machine gives her two drinks, she only takes one. Because she says, it's not right for me to take that other one because I didn't pay for it. You know what I tell her? Hey, man, I that like today it took two of my drinks, so it owes me one. Yeah. But but that's that's kind of the thought process wow. behind it. Or Pepsi makes enough money, so what's this one <laughs> right. going to hurt? Sure. Right. I justify it. Sure. You know, I'm going to take that drink. Mm -hmm. It owes me. Wow. You know. But but when when it comes down to it, and I'm not trying to get nitpicky with it, mm -hmm. but we do have to make conscious decisions or yep. unconscious right. decisions every day. That reminds me of a story and I, I may get this wrong I hope I don't there was a new preacher in town and it's probably one of these heavy, heavily pop, populated areas because he, he got got on the bus he gets on the bus he probably gives his dollar uh, maybe it was a 50 cent bus ride. I don't know anyways the, the bus driver gave him extra change okay, and he goes to the back and he sits down and he, he sit, sits down on the bus he count, starts counting his change he realizes he's been given a quarter too much or whatever the bus fare was 
Well, when he gets off the bus, when he comes to a stop, he walks up there and he says, hey, sir, you, you gave me an extra quarter. He said, I knew I did, and I knew you were the new preacher in town. He said, I'll see you Sunday. <laughs> wow. You know, how, how true that story is, I don't know, but how many times growing up uh, do we hear that we're, we're the only Bible that someone may read? Right. And, and that really is so true. It may be cliche a little bit, but it's so true that somebody could see your wife leave that drink, or right. somebody could see me in the grocery store do something that, knowing that I'm a Christian, knowing that I belong to Azalea City, knowing that I belong to wherever, and, and may be really positively impacted by it. Yeah, um, and, and there are so many ethical things that, decisions that I believe we make as Christians, even as human beings, every day, you know, and, and certainly I'm not here. I I have never said on this podcast nor in my lifetime that I am a perfect person. I make mistakes all the time. I cannot sit here and tell you I have ever never gone over the speed limit because I have. Now, I have fortunately never been ticketed because of that, but that doesn't make it right, you know. It doesn't but but even on a scale that I think most people would figure, you know, well, that's not really that big a deal. Now, in the policeman's eyes, I'm sure it is. But but when it comes to decisions like that every day, are we doing what is right? Mm -hmm. Now, why would we not do what is right? Because the devil's good at what he does. Mm -hmm. You know, Eve knew it was wrong to eat of the yeah. fruit, but he made it look like it was okay. Yeah. Now, can you imagine? And, and who knows what kind of fruit it was, okay? But let's just say uh, I love peaches, and you know I'm sure we do not have that fruit anymore. It was taken away. I don't know. We'll have to ask God one day. But let's just say it was a peach tree, and you know to look at a peach, I don't know that it's really attractive in itself. It's fuzzy, you know, or whatever. And uh, I don't know if I would want to just pick something up off the ground if I didn't know it was good and eat it, right. looking fuzzy and everything, or pick it off a tree. Well, let's just say it was a peach tree, and he says. She thinks, oh, no, I can't go anywhere around that peach tree, okay? And he says, no, no, and, and he slithers his way a little bit more, and he says, just touch it. And then she touches it, and, you know, maybe, well, I didn't die, but it is a little fuzzy or something. But then he keeps on convincing her to ultimately she justifies, she rationalizes, and she eats of the fruit and becomes knowledgeable, uh, knowledgeable of good and evil. Well, see, that's the way the devil works in our lives. He tries to get us to do what we do not want to do. And can you imagine, I know you preached on this a few Sundays ago, <clears throat> a, what would happen if we all did what was right in our own eyes? See, you know, I think we almost need to define what is right. So we have culturally right, which obviously is not going to uh, line up always with right. what God says is right. Right. And Sorry, I don't have the scripture right here on, on the tip of my tongue, but um, there is a place where we're told that we show God that we love him by obeying his commandments. Yes, yeah. if you love me, keep my keep commandments. My commandments. Jesus right. said that. So that's God's right, his Correct. commandments. And I know last night in our Wednesday night devotional, you read from the Ten Commandments. How many of these are, are we following? I know that's our old law. We have Jesus' even more strict new law, new commandments on Yes, sure, we don't murder, but do we hate our brother? And sure, we don't necessarily maybe commit adultery, but do we lust after people? Mm -hmm. um, so God's right is, is very strict. It's commands, and it's, it's clear. Yeah. Speaking of, of that, you know, you think about uh, nobody would ever think, I'm not going to kill anybody. Or uh, Let me just say, Christians mm -hmm. typically do not think, well, I'm not going to go out and kill anybody, but there may be... Christians, at least by name, that hate somebody by the color of their skin. Sure. You know, or they hate somebody because of what they did to their family. You know, and those are the things we're talking about here, about getting rid of that, making a conscious decision to make sure that we always do what is right, mm -hmm. because God's always watching. I didn't mean to, to interrupt no, your thought good. there, but I will just tag mm -hmm. on to that. Paul struggled with it. Mm -hmm. and, and let's face it. There are times I struggle with making right decisions. Paul also taught us that uh, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. I'm a sinner. Justin's a sinner. He probably sins less than me, but Justin, Justin's a sinner. We're all sinners. The, the point is we will make mistakes. We will struggle at times, 
not doing what is right. But the Apostle Paul did as well. I'm not trying to justify it again. I'm not trying to get us to touch the fruit and eat the fruit. But Paul said it this way in Romans 7.19. And I think we can all relate to this. For the good that I will to do, I do not do. But the evil I will not to do, that I practice. Mm -hmm. That is a struggle. Yes, I agree. And, and you mentioned Martin Luther King earlier. The one part that I love the most about um, about his speech is when he talks about I have a dream and he says that one day we won't be judged by the color of our skin but we'll be judged by the content of our character right. and already kind of defining what character is doing what is right or, or what we do when nobody is looking mm -hmm. that I think that's how God's going to judge us he's going to judge us on our character how we perform right how we hold up to his commandments and that's why I want to be judged. I don't want to be judged by any kind of preconceived notion of, of my family or mm -hmm. the people I hang around or the color of my skin or anything. I yeah. want to be judged on what I do and how I treat people. And, and you're exactly right. What Paul is talking about there is, is an absolute struggle to us sometimes. Yeah. Um, there are so many times that we're in the public that we are put to the test. You know, last week we talked about negativity. Again, if, if you haven't seen our podcast or listened to it, you can catch all those, and we'll talk about that at the end. But we talked about negativity, and it's almost like once I got that out of my mouth and we talked about it, I went somewhere, and I was put to the challenge. <laughs> you know, there were negative people around mm -hmm. me. But I tried to remember, and uh, we've got someone who, well, a lot of people who are here who are very positive people, but um, I, I think of one in particular, and, and he always tries to use moments where people are in line or whatever, and they're complaining, and, and try to, to put a spin on it. Well, even in situations like that, and what I'm saying is, we may be put to the test after this podcast. Sure. There may be a temptation. There may be an a, a opportunity for us to eat of that fruit of knowledge of good and evil, quote unquote. Mm -hmm. And will we have the strength to be able to resist it? And that's kind of the what you're talking about there. That's the character side of us. Right. You know, the good Christian character that we're supposed to walk by. The good news is God didn't expect us to be perfect. Mm -mm. No, you're, you're right. I want to tell you a story, too. You reminded me of uh, well, saying we may be put to the test. Christmas time came around this past year. And Ashley had bought something from Pottery Barn or something. It was like a little play kitchen for Riley. Well, something happened in the shipping order. They didn't ship us one. They shipped us 12. Wow. Okay, so we had 12 toys that, and this is, I mean, not a high Riley dollar. Riley was like, Merry yeah. Christmas. <laughs> yeah, but it's like the 12 days of Christmas. You get one every day. But it was all the same kind and color and everything, I guess. We never took them out of the box. We gave her the one. But, you know, you're left with a choice at that point, and, and you can call uh, to Pottery Barn, and their customer service is probably like, look, we made the mistake, yeah. keep them. Yeah. You know, keep them, do whatever. You could go, a lot of people nowadays may have gone and resold them on eBay or Craigslist right. or something and, and made a killing off right. of them, essentially. But Ashley really impressed me. She called, and they said, look, just keep them. She's like, we have no need for 12 or 11 extra, you know. Can we please send them back and... Of course, they were like, you know, thank you so much. May it, may it save somebody's job. Sure. I don't know. I mean, that's an expensive item. When that happens and we're faced with situations like that or if somebody charges you uh, too little or gives you too much change and you go back to the drive through or you, you correct it on your bank statement or whatever, we may never see the benefit. And I say right. benefit from that. I put that in quotations for, for all those who are listening. That... It's, we're not seeking the benefit. We're not seeking that glory. But we may not see um, the impact on somebody mm -hmm. initially in the short term. But I think in the long term, uh, we've mentioned this commercial before, one of the insurance commercials, if we can impact somebody, and then they can take that and mm -hmm. impact somebody and take it and impact somebody, you know, it can be almost a snowball effect that we don't receive any glory, not that we want from it, but it just can, again, help impact people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I never got 12 little kids' um, kitchens or anything, but I did get an extra hammer from Home Depot nice. one time. Uh, it was under some stuff, and they rang me up or whatever, and, and the hammer, and I noticed it when I got home, actually, because it was, you know, just loaded everything in the truck or whatever, and I got home, I was like, man, I didn't pay for this hammer. 
But I did. I took it back up there. Now, they did tell me to keep the hammer in. You know, I, I didn't put it on eBay. I still use it, actually. <laughs> I still own that hammer. But I always think about that story. Right. You know, I, here I got a hammer out of it. Now, I don't know. It might have cost like $3, $5 yeah. or something. And, and not to hijack your story, but a lot of times we may see things like, this is a five dollar hammer. It's gonna cost me more money yeah. to drive back up to the store, and we just keep it. And you know, I, I don't know. It's just tough situations. I yeah, and, and you know, sometimes the motivation is not to do the right thing. It's I don't want to get in trouble. Yeah. Um, you know, maybe if I were younger, I would have thought, ooh, you know, I, I better take this hammer back because I don't want the police to come after sure, me. You know, right. they may have me on camera, or yeah, yeah, or whatever. Right. But. And, and I think that's kind of how it is in our Christian mm-hmm. walk. Sometimes we, when we obey the gospel and we become Christians, you know, our, the, originally we do it because we don't want to go to hell. Mm-hmm. But that relationship grows, and it's, I, I want to be with my father. Mm-hmm. I want my relationship with him to grow. And that's what we're talking about today. Not doing right because God's going to punish us right. for doing wrong, but doing right because it's the right thing mm-hmm. to do. You know, somebody said, and I, no, go ahead. just one go second. Ahead. Uh, I've seen, you know, stickers and different things on cars years gone by that that um you know and i've had debated to me um from different people or questioned at least you know what if what if you die and and there is no god first of all i don't have time to go into the evidence Mm -hmm. of god i mean there are plenty of arguments we can prove god's existence today but let's just say um and, and where i was going with this is i saw a bumper sticker one time said um if you say there is no God, you better be right. You know, and I think that's pretty strong. Mm-hmm. Um, but if, let's say there were, there, there were no heaven, there were no hell, there were no God, no anything like that. Now, obviously we'd live in a state of chaos, okay, yes. because there'd be mm-hmm. no morals, mm-hmm. etc. But let's just pretend just for a moment. If I died and I tried to do what was right, I tried to be a good husband, I tried to be a good father, I tried to be a good man in the community, you know, do treat people the right way, do good, mm-hmm. do, the time is always right to do what is right, yes. I try to take advantage of that, well, at, at my funeral, they're going to say good things about mm-hmm. me, they're going to be good things said, this was a good man, he tried to do what was right, and so it's just a better lifestyle, no matter what, now, obviously there is a God, yep. and he's going to bless us for doing what's I right, agree. which is even uh, a greater um, encouragement through all of this, I mean, you know, there was a time where everyone did what was right in their own eyes. And that had to have been a scary time to live in society, right? That would be terrifying out in our, our culture today, I know. <clears throat> in, um, in 1 Kings chapter 15, in verse 5, it says there, Because David did what was right in the eyes of the Lord and did not turn aside from anything that he commanded him all the days of his life, except in the matter of Uriah the Hittite. And I know... Imagine, I know how powerful David was and how uh, impactful David was. And we still can learn from him today, right? A man after God's own heart. Somebody who was maybe just as close to, to a living Jesus Christ as there, there possibly could be. But it says there, except in the matter of Uriah the Hittite, I wonder how many people David negatively impacted, right? And I don't want to bring a negative spin on this, but... But in the one time, David did right so much. And he got caught up one time. Nobody saw, right? He was on his rooftop. Bathsheba was on hers. He saw her, and we know the rest of the story. Uh, He he put Uriah on the front line, so he committed adultery, committed murder. Uh, He was obviously punished for that. He was obviously remorseful for that. But the one time, he kind of let his guard down. Mm -hmm. That, again, in today's culture, that's not necessarily quote-unquote wrong, but by God's commands, that's that's absolutely wrong. And I just wonder how many people I negatively impact if I don't always do what's right. Yeah, there are so many things that that we can learn off mm-hmm. of that. Um, you know, a good name is a good character, a good reputation. It takes a while to build, absolutely. but it only takes a little while mm-hmm. to tear it down. You know, mm-hmm. you... Your family um, has has construction business and demolition business, and I've I've mentioned this with him in class before. Um, your your uncle uh, Mike, that you know, how long does it take to build a building? And and it takes months, sometimes years, right. to build a building. But it just takes a matter of hours mm-hmm. to tear it right. down. And and so that reputation, it doesn't take long to tear it down. Yeah. 
and we got to be careful. But what you said about David did what was right in the sight of God, except for now. But but let's talk about him doing what's right in God's sight. There are so many scriptures that remind us of this. You know, in Noah's day, man's heart was evil continuously. Yes. I can't imagine that. But when you take God out of something, mm -hmm. that's what happens. I mean, you can look at that in our country. You can look at it in the public school system. You can look at it in a lot of things. When we take God out, bad things happen. Mm -hmm. And when we take God out of our lives, there's only evil. Because, listen, the proverb writer... Uh, wrote in Proverbs 21 to every way of a man is right in his own eyes but the Lord examines the heart mm -hmm. if we take and do it our way like Frank Sinatra or Elvis Presley <laughs> saying I did it my way mm -hmm. when we do it our way we're gonna mess it up yep. royally yep. but we've got to remember that it's God looks at the heart. And that's what he did with David, even in, in that story of Bathsheba. It cost Nadab and Abihu the sons of Aaron their lives. Right? Yeah, no doubt. And when they were really kind of bullying people around, and even though you and I talked before we did this podcast, even though they were worshiping, right, they, they offered the unauthorized fire. They weren't doing it correctly, yeah. the way, the God way of doing it. They were doing it what was right in their own eyes. And it cost them. The yeah. earth swallowed them up, right? Yeah, they were struck down with a fire. You know, they and, were consumed right. by that fire. And then you, you look to in, in Acts chapter 5, I believe it is, when uh, Ananias and Sapphira, yeah. where people were selling all their properties, right? And selling everything they had and, and, and coming and, and giving those, uh, giving that up, donating that. And they, they kept back a little bit. And they I don't know, I don't know we need necessarily need to get caught up here. I don't know that keeping back a little bit was right. necessarily wrong, right. but the lies that they had about him, you know, and, and when they brought them in, they brought them in separately. They brought uh, Ananias in first, and, and they asked, hey, is this true? Did you do, do, do this? And they had all obviously talked together, hey, let's, let's yeah, get yeah. each other's back before sure. we go in there. No, 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 no. We did. We gave everything. Uh, he was struck dead, and, yeah. and they brought and, the fire in. And you know, it was thing. the same thing, mm -hmm. uh, and... Peter tells them there, you can't, well, I don't know if he told them too much, but he told the people watching, you can't lie to the Holy Spirit. Yeah. And, you know, it, it's an illustration I heard a preacher say one time, I've kind of adopted and made my own. Um, you know, listen, I do a lot of things that are not right mm -hmm. all the time. But one thing I've always done well, I've never been tempted by alcohol. It's never been a temptation to me. You could put all the alcohol in the world in this room and it wouldn't bother me. There are other things that I am tempted by, so let me just tell you out from the outset, I'm not getting into a debate about drinking or uh, privately or whatever. I, I believe it's all wrong, but that's just me. But let's just pretend today I wanted to go and, and drink some alcohol for the first time in my life. Now, I grow, I've grown up in this community, and so I certainly am not going to go anywhere sure. in this community but I need some gas in my truck, so I'm going to fill my truck up with gas today. Again, this is all pretend. If you're tuning into the live show, this is still pretend. <laughs> you're just okay. joining us. Uh, let's say I fill my truck up with gas today, and I drive, what, I'm going to get 300 and something miles out of a tank of gas. I don't know where that's going to end up, so you know, I'm just pretending mm -hmm. here. So I get to a gas station 300 and something miles away from here, and I feel like, you know, i got to ball cap in my truck. I put it on. I got some sunglasses. I'm going to go in here and I sneak around. And At least get you north of Birmingham. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So, so I go into this gas station. I buy this alcohol. And I think, you know, am I going to drink it now? No, no, no. I'm still kind of in the state of Alabama here and people may still recognize me even though I snuck in and snuck out. Fill my truck back up with gas and I drive. And that's a long story. I'm sorry. But I get to a point where I come to some woods, okay? And I decide, well, I'm going to hike into these woods. I'm going to drink this alcohol. So I hike and I hike and I hike and I hike and I hike. And I come to a mountain. I'm really a long <laughs> way away now. So I'm like, well, I'm just going to climb up the mountain and drink. So I climb up the mountain. Right to do. You know drinking alcohol is, is wrong, right? You've preached on that. You've taught on that for so many years. And then you go off and do something like that. Mm -hmm. that that's sin. Mm -hmm. you know, again, God's 
commands. God's right is his commands. And, right. and right is always right in that aspect. You know, and, and when it comes down to looking at the Bible, it's, I'm thankful God put people in the Bible like Paul, who was a persecutor of Christians, mm-hmm. but he became such a great man. Peter, who denied Jesus yeah. Christ, who even went to the trouble of, of cursing to be able to not sound like somebody who'd been with Jesus. Um, he ended up being a great soul winner for God. You know, David, even though that haunts him, he's still such a great king of Israel, such a great hero. But you take somebody like Joseph, and I know Joseph was imperfect, sure. and I know Joseph made mistakes, but really there's not a lot of bad things we can say about Joseph. No. And he was put in some very tough situations. Yeah, you think uh, the whole Potiphar's wife um, well, situation. We'll even go back before that. Right. In the pit yep. with his brothers. Yep. If your sister's now... I Coco might can now, She's probably good. but if Coco and Katie decided they were going to gang up on you yeah. and throw you in a pit, you will be like, I love. You. He will submit to us. Mm-hmm. If we draw near to God, He will draw near to to us. We've got to submit our lives to Him, and when we do so, the devil flees from That's us, right. right? Instead of the devil lurking around like in the situation with Adam and Eve mm-hmm. and so many others. But yeah, Joseph was in a in a ton of predicaments, yeah. and even there in the prison cell, you know, when they forget about yeah. it. Yeah. You know, he says, hey, y'all remember me, and they didn't. I mean, he never becomes bitter. Right. And, and that's that's the kind of character I need to adopt. We all need to adopt. Whether I'm, you know, my brothers and sisters or my people that I love turn on me. Um, if I'm faced with huge temptations. If, you know, I'm done wrong by people in the world. And I think all those things happen. And then when it came time to... To forgive his brothers, he did. Yeah, I was, I was going to mention that because you, you said the word bitter. I thought it was a good, good word in, in that situation. Is When Joseph finally saw his brothers again, th- there wasn't even a hint of, of a little bit of anger towards yeah. them. I mean, he had, to, he had to go out of their presence, and he wept. Right. right? He was like, man, I finally am seeing them again. I, can't, I don't know how many years that was, but I can't imagine what, what he was thinking. And I, I think there would be a, maybe... For some of us, be a little bitter. Yeah, you know, no like, doubt about we, it. like, you know what you did to me? <laughs> exactly. You know, and you know who I am? Right, yeah. Now to the master. You know? <laughs> but he just thanked them and, and loved them and, and wanted to be right there with them. So I thought it was really powerful. Joseph was a, was a great example in that. Yeah, and I, man, it's a huge challenge, you know? Mm-hmm. And I think this is something that that is, is a challenge to, to me. I'm sure it's a challenge to you and a challenge to all those who are listening out there. When, when we go down in the water and we contact the blood of Jesus Christ, we're changed people. Yes. We enter a contract with God that says, I'm going to strive to do what's right all the mm-hmm. time. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm going to try to be right in your sight. That's what righteousness is, being right in mm-hmm. the sight of God. God, I'm going to try to uphold your righteousness all the time. Now, God loves us enough to allow us out of that contract. He, he doesn't make us stay in it. He wants us to choose. And so my challenge to us today is this, and, and I'm not talking about a drink machine or going one mile an hour with the speed limit. I'm not getting into all that ethical type stuff. But, but when it comes down to making good moral decisions and decisions that, that we're going to have how many thousand? 35,000. 35,000 decisions. And there may be some that we even make that we're not even counted in there for all I know. Absolutely. Yeah, that's 35,000 conscious. So there's yeah, a conscious. lot of ones that we don't right. even think about we just do. Right. When it comes down to making those decisions, mm-hmm. I want us, and, and this is my close, sure. okay? I want us to adopt what Paul said in Colossians 3, verse 17. If we can adopt this verse, and and you know, if, maybe you need to, to memorize it. Maybe you need to write it down on your hand. I do that a lot. Mm-hmm. Or put it in your phone as a reminder. Whatever it may be, if we can adopt this verse, it will help us in our walk with God in doing what's right. Paul said there, whatever you do, in word mm-hmm. or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. And I think that is so critical. You know, if whatever I do, word or deed, I want to do what pleases God. 
You know, and, and, and I'll say this. I have men who are over me, just like you do, who uh, shepherd us. You know, George is one of those elders, one of those shepherds that shepherd the flock. But they could walk in and, and they could fire me. You know, I, I'm thankful I have a good relationship, but, but technically, yes, those men are our bosses, okay? But somebody asked me one time, and, and I want this to be heard carefully, um, the elders, aren't they your bosses? I understand completely what that means. Yes, they, they can fire me. Mm -hmm. They hired me, they can fire me. But I want to take it a step further. I don't work for them. Mm -mm. I do it for God. Mm -hmm. And if I can lay my head on my pillow at night and know that I've done my, as we say in the South, John Brown best, mm -hmm. whoever that is, to please God, then I'm going to please these guys as well. Absolutely. You know, we can't get caught up in trying to be people pleasers at all. We That's such a powerful verse because it really encompasses everything. Mm -hmm. And if, if I could remember that verse, and it's not hard to memorize, and you can write it on the most powerful sticky note of all time is your hand, right? And if I could memorize that verse, and before those 35,000 decisions that I really think about, say, you know, whatever I'm about to decide here, whatever choice I make, can I make sure that that I'm doing this for God, and I think we make a lot more better decisions. You know, that's right. a lot more better. That's really good <laughs> English. But, but we would be so much more wholesome people, too. I'd like to close with two verses here, one being uh, Galatians chapter 6, verses 9 and 10. And let us not grow weary of doing good, for in due season we will reap if we do not give up. So then, as we have opportunity, let us do good to everyone, and especially to those who are the household of faith, Sometimes we may feel like we're on an island by ourselves. We may feel like we're the only one trying to do good. We're the only one dedicated to our work or dedicated to, to serving God. Let's not grow weary in doing good. Yeah, I can imagine Noah as he was building the ark. There was probably some days where he was like, am I the only one? No doubt. You know? A hundred and some years. And, and he really kind of was other than his family. You know, I'm sure David had that thought. Am I the only one that's trying to do good? Elijah Abraham, had that thought. Elijah, Elijah definitely did because I spoke in chapel this morning. I used Elijah. It's funny you said, it, but when when he was faced or faced the prophets of Baal and and God had destroyed them, you know, he goes away in the next chapter and he's laying on his face like, God, everyone's abandoning your covenant. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm the only one that's left. But Obviously, I don't think he was at that time. We're never the only ones, you know. So let's not grow weary. Let's not grow weary in doing good. Right is always right. And then 1 Thessalonians 5, 14 and 15. And we urge you, brothers, admonish the idle, encourage the faint-hearted, help the weak, be patient with them all, see that no one repays evil for evil, but seek to do good to one another and to everyone. It's just they're, they're good scriptures to end with to say, let's make sure as Christians that we seek to do good. Always. Mm -hmm. And understanding that if we are, se are seeking to please God, then we're, we have to just deal with that we're pleasing everyone else. That's right. right? We, we work for God. That's exactly right. We work right. for God. Right is always right. The right defined there is God's commandments. And let's make sure as Christians that we always follow those. Again, thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, if you're Facebook Live, thank you for uh, spending the last 35 or so minutes with us want to always uh, remind you that you can find us pasted all over social media. Facebook, uh, you can search Edified. iTunes, you can search Edified. Uh, edified underscore podcast on Instagram. We're on Twitter. We're on YouTube. Uh, you can always personal message us or direct message us through any of those sites. Uh, message our page directly. You can go to uh, www.edifiedpodcast.com. Mm -hmm. I believe I got that right. Um, if you have any topics in the future that you would like uh, for us to discuss, please email us or, or send those through those social media outlets. We have had a few, and, and we always enjoy um, what you want to hear. We always right. enjoy speaking on what you want to hear and, and um, really appreciate you tuning in again. Um, tune in next week for episode 19. Again, without George, but we, we hope George has a great time in Ukraine and all the work that he's doing there. Thank you.